The interesting thing about the cross product is you don't get a scalar value. Instead, you end up with a new vector that is perpendicular to the other two vectors. So for instance, if we had two vectors, let's just call them vector v1 and vector v2, our third vector that would be created by taking the cross product of these two would end up being either like this, which we'll call v3, or if we swap the order, it might end up coming down straight like this. We'll also call this v3. With the cross product, it matters what order you process them in. And that's what we're actually going to take a look at in this example. So let's just say that vector 1 is actually going to be, I'm going to make this very easy. So let's make it the x vector, 1, 0, 0. Let's make vector 2 the z, so 0, 0, 1. What we hope to get out of this is a vector that either goes up into the y direction or down in the negative direction. The cross product has been notoriously difficult for people to remember. I like to think of the entire setup on a cylinder. This will make a little bit more sense in just a second. Let's go ahead and write our values out really quick. So we're going to do the cross product of V1 and V2. So let's do V1 cross. So for V1, we have 1, 0, and 0. For V2, we have 0, 0, and 1. Now what you have to remember is that this is the x, this is the y, and that this is the z. We are expecting to get out of this a new vector with an x component, a y component, and a z component. Therefore, we need to find a value for each one of these. And the way we do this is for the x value, we look at the y's and the z's. For the y, we look at the z and the x, and for the z, we look at the x and the y. So for the x term, it's going to end up being, we actually cross this out, we don't, we ignore this for the x term, and we only look at these. So let's do, so if we consider this a and b and c and d, the cross product is going to be a d minus b c. So A in this case is 0, D is 1 minus, B in this case is 0, and C is 0. So what we end up with is this whole thing is 0. So the X term is 0. Now for the Y part, we're actually only going to use the Z in the X term. Now I like to think of the cross product as a cylinder, where the values sort of just wrap back around. So you can imagine, here's our cylinder, and we have our x term, our y terms, and our z terms, right? And then here would be 1 and 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 and 1. When we deal with the x term, it was the y and z. Now that we're at the y term, we move on to the next part, which is z, and we wrap around to the x. So what we're really dealing with is the z and x terms. So those are going to be 0 and 1, and 1 and 0. Now, there's another way you can do this, and that has to do with negating whatever value you deal with in this case. Um, I don't like that just because it requires you always remember that the center one needs to be negated, which unless you understand what's going on here, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So just by wrapping back around to the beginning makes a little bit more sense to me at least. Maybe it'll make sense to you as well. So once again, it's going to be A, B, A, D minus B, C which in this case is going to be 0 times 0 minus b, which is 1 times 1, all right? So what we get out of this is a value of negative 1, 0 minus 1. Next up is the z term. So because we wrap back around, right, it's the x and the y's we care about. So now let's look at the x. So that was 1 and 0, and the y was 0 and 0. So what we get out of that, if we do AD minus BC, we're going to get a 1 times 0 minus B 0 times C, which is 0, which gives us a 0. So the vector we end up getting out of this is going to be the second one, the one that goes negative. So this is what we end up with. So there was vector 1 and vector 2, 
And by doing this, we end up with a vector that points downwards. Why? Well, it has to do with which vector was on top and which one was on bottom when we began to process this. If you think about it, if we swap this order, if instead of doing 1, 0, 0, we did 0, 0, 1 on top, let's do that. Let's, let's put 1, 0, 0 on the bottom, and let's put 0, 0, 1 on top. But if you notice, there was only one spot in this that mattered. Everything else was zero. And this makes sense if you understand how this works. I'm multiplying these two vectors, the, literally um, the uh, basis vectors for this, and I'm getting the other vector, that is the y direction, because I'm only working in the x and the z. So in this case, if we flip-flop that order, once again, the x term does nothing. It was just this y term that did anything, so that was going to end up being what? A value of 1 times a value of 1 minus, and it's this minus that causes the flip, right? Because if you think about it, what we're doing now is before this term was on this side. Now it's in the front, so it's not being negated. Therefore, when we go ahead and check out this next part, so what's going to happen here was uh, we're doing this right here, so it's 1 times 1, and then it's going to be 0 times 0. What we end up with now is a positive 1, which means that our vector is now going to point upwards in the positive direction. Now let's take a look inside of Unity on how to use these vectors properly.